Welcome to Win Souls TV. This is your host, Jeff Thomas, and I have a little testimony for you guys today. So, for a while, I it was like a blockage that was preventing me from having uh, strong experiences with the Lord. And when I went to this Michael Van Vlyman conference, the supernatural in these end times, oh my gosh, it was like all of that stuff was just broken off of me. There was um, a serpent that was oppressing me. And, uh, you know, there was, there was, I had a dream about a burden that I was holding on to based off of a specific last relationship that I had. And, um, in that dream or vision, or honestly, I was actually in their room. Um, I had gone to sleep in my hotel room and then there was two guys that I met at the conference and I ended up in their room <laughs> while I was still asleep in, in my room. So uh, my, my spirit was gone and I described their room to a T. There were specific things in certain places that I told them that they were and uh, uh, they confirmed that. And so, but in the vision or whatever, we were talking about um, how I was carrying around this burden. So in the natural, the next day during the conference, I asked them, to pray over me. And before I knew it, it was 10 people just ganged all up on me, laying hands on me, praying over me. And I couldn't do anything but cry because I felt that power. And I felt like there was there was a jacket just 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 being taken off of me. I felt free. I felt that freedom that I hadn't felt in a very long time. And just getting emotional thinking about it. Well, that same night, all of these specific things have been prophesied over my life for a very long time. Um, I had been told that I was going to be doing this, 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 this for the kingdom, all of this stuff. Well, I was kind of feeling down in the dumps a little bit because I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because it's just like, well, when? When is this stuff actually going to start happening in my life? So about 20 minutes go by and I'm, I'm still, I'm reading the word and I had put up the word and I, I ate a little bit and out of nowhere, the Lord said, this is about an hour later after this. He said, I want you to go to IHOP, which was right across the street from my hotel. I want you to go to IHOP and I want you to order three pancakes and bacon. And I said, all right. So I put on my shoes and I go to IHOP and I'm at IHOP. And I'm just, you know, it's it's like 11, 11 o'clock, like 11.10, you know, when I showed up there. And what happened was um, I get there and there were there were two people that were walking in with me. And, and we were just like, man, are they even open? Because nobody was there. You know, IHOP is basically supposed to be open 24 hours. But I don't think this one was. I think it closed at like 1 or so or 12. I, I can't remember. Well, we get there and... Um, the Lord basically let me know. I just had a knowing that those two people were the people that he had really sent me there for. And so after I finished my pancakes and bacon, or while I'm eating them, I said, okay, Lord, did you, do you have a word for them? Like, what is it that you want me to do in this situation? And he said, the, the gentleman or the man has a, a son. And then the lady has a daughter. And in my head, he put a picture of like maybe like a five, ten year old, you know, a five year old girl. And so I said, OK, is there anything else? And he just got quiet. So usually with my relationship with the Lord, when the Lord tells me a little something about somebody, he'll get quiet until I make the next step. And then when I make the next step, he'll tell me more about the situation. So finishing up my pancakes and. It was like the longer that I waited, the more intimidating the situation became because it was just like these people look like bikers. I had no idea, you know, may possibly in like a biker gang and all of this stuff. I was like, I didn't I didn't want to get involved in all of that. I'm just being real here. OK, I didn't want to get involved in all of that. I know my power. I know the power of God. If he tells me to go, I'm going to go anyway. But it was just like the longer that I waited, it, it just became more intimidating to me. So I just finished it up and I immediately got up and I walked over there. 
And I said, this is going to sound really weird. And then the guy said to me, he said, well, he's, what did he say? He said, um, the guy said to me, well, it's going to have to be really weird in order to be weird because honestly, I, I operate in the prophetic. And when he said that, I was like, okay, good. I'm, I'm right at home. And then um, I said, do you have a son? And then he said, yeah. And then I turned to her and I said, well, do you have a daughter? Like a, a younger daughter? He said, she said, well, I have a daughter that's 14 years old. And then I also have another daughter that's younger than her. I can't remember the age, maybe like eight or so, five or so. I can't remember. And so then we, we end up talking about the Lord and all of this, that and the other. And I had a hoodie on that, that was just saying iron sharpens iron. And so we, we get to talking about the Lord and the Lord let me pray over them. I didn't know this, but the lady, uh, while I'm praying, I lended my tongue and my mouth and all of my faculties to, to the Lord and came to find out that she had been raped and molested as a child. And he had been, at a young age, he was a prostitute. He was a prostitute. And <clears throat> and I, I'm, I'm talking with him and everything, and, and he was just letting me know that, man, this is just so powerful. He was just letting me know that the Lord went to, you know, how great lengths that, that the Lord went to to get him out of that lifestyle. He was a male prostitute for males. And so he said that as soon as I walked in the door, he said that he knew that there was something about me uh, simply because he has, because of his past experiences, he, he's very cautious around other men. And which is, which is really sad, but based off of his past experiences, he's, he's very cautious around other men. And, and with her, she was dealing with a relationship with someone that was um, emotionally abusive. He wanted power, uh, this, that, and the other. And he still has that impact in her life. Well, I was used to pray over all of that and break all of the strategies of darkness that were working in their lives. And, uh, you know, it was it was really powerful, but just taking that step to move off of going to get pancakes and bacon was just such a powerful testimony to me. So when he tells you to go and it may be something stupid, go to the bubble gum machine, you never know who might be there or go to the vending machine get you a drink, go get a Coke or go whatever. Always be alert and expectation in that place because he's not sending you there for no reason. He's sending you there to impact and to bring the power of God into somebody else's life. You guys be blessed. Have a good one.